I want you to notice for this triangle, this could be any triangle. I've called the lengths A, B, and C. I've called the points, the corners, the vertices, I've called them capital A, capital B, capital C. Can you remember why they are where they are? Why are they there? They are, for example, if here's, that's B, sorry, if that's B, then I put the lowercase b, the side, opposite. Very good. Okay, you remember that's important. Okay. So in theory, you could have had it like the a, the, like. Yeah, I could have, I could have renamed it, which will become important in a second. Okay. So, I want you to remember last time we developed this formula, and it told us about the area of this triangle. Do you remember that? So what I want us to do, especially if you've got another color there, is I want to highlight the features on this triangle that we're using. Okay? So have a look. Say it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you can see it's over here on the right-hand side of my page. That's because I'm going to draw some other stuff on the left there shortly. Okay? If it's on the left, it's fine. It's fine. All right, have a look. Where are the features that I'm interested in? Here's one of the sides. There's A. Here's another one of the sides. There's B. Now, importantly, and some of you asked me this during the review questions, where is the angle that we're using? It has to be in between. And we have that special word that starts with an I. We call it the included angle, right? Because it's not a social loner. So we need, to, uh, we need to mark that in. So there's C, and if you've got colors, maybe you want to um, fill that in as well. Okay. Now, here's the important thing I want you to know. In this example, I actually have all this different information at my, um, at my fingertips. So half A, B, sine C is not the only way that I'm forced to actually work out the area of this triangle. For instance, uh, and sorry that I'm doing this quickly, but you can draw another one. If you take the same triangle, instead of picking A and B, say for instance, I picked, yes please, say for instance, I picked A, and C. So I've got, that's a poor color choice. Sorry, let me do that again. Uh, if I had these two sides here, which angle would I use? B. I would use the one between them, which in this case is B. Okay, so again, I'm going to draw that up here. Okay. Yeah, yes, please. Yes, please. Now, because I've used different features here, the way I state the area formula will be ever so slightly different. It's not going to be half AB sine C. It's going to be half AC sine B. Different sides, different angle. AC sine B. Okay. Now, I promise this is the last time I'm going to ask you to do it. But there are three angles to choose from. So far, I've used two of them. So what's the last possibility that I have left? Which pair of sides would you like me to use? B, B and C, right? I haven't used that combination yet. B and C. Which of course means if I'm using those two sides, then the angle must be A down there in the bottom. Okay. Now, for the third and final time, if I choose those features instead, I will write the formula slightly differently. I'm going to say not half A, B, sine C, but half B, C, sine A. Okay, I promise, no more drawing now. Now, here's the important thing. Why did I ask you to draw this three times? Here's why. There's only three possibilities. Well, number one, there's only three ways to do it. That's it. There's no other combination that you could use. But more sort of, at a more meta level, right? Mathematicians do this all the time. Trigonometry, and our study of it, is not really right now about triangles. It's about approaching the same problem from multiple different angles, and every time you look at it a new way, you learn something new, okay? And this is just a principle in life. If you've got a problem to solve, try approaching it from lots of different perspectives, and you'll gain something. Here's what we're gonna gain this time. What was I working out, again? It's area, right? But it's the same triangle every time. So therefore, no matter which way you look at it, all of these areas are the same value. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so I know this is a bit weird. We usually say equations, you've got to have two things, left-hand side, right-hand side, but you've got three things, they're all equal. Okay, so are you okay with that? Now, just like all your normal equations, it's fine. Just like all your normal equations, 
If you do something to one side, you can do it to all the rest and everything stays fine. Okay? So here's the first thing I do want to do. I want to simplify this a little bit. See how there's a half out the front of each of those? What can I do to all three parts to get rid of the half? I can multiply everything by two. I'm going to do that. If I multiply this by two and this by two and this by two, okay? My next line is going to be BC sine A, AC sine B, and then the one we started with, AB sine C. Okay. Now this next bit, this is the last step of working really. Maybe you wouldn't guess at it, but what I'm trying to do is see a pattern that flows all the way through. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide every one of these parts by a particular term, the same term every time I have to because they're all equal. The term I'm going to choose, and you might not have guessed this, is A and B and C multiplied together every single time. Now if you do that, I want you to watch what happens. Have a look. Just look at the first one on the left. What terms cancel? B and C. B and C. They're gone there and they're gone there. What about in the middle? The, the A, C cancels with the A and the C. Do you agree? It's different. That's, that's all about an angle, yeah? Last one. What cancels on the right hand side? The A and the B. They're gone. Okay. So now I'm going to write this all neat and tidy with all, without all my cancelled things. What I find is that if I take sine of that angle, whatever it happens to be, and divide by what's left? It's A, but which A is it? Because it's two A's. It's the lowercase, which is the length, right? That's the length. That's going to be equal to sine B, that's the angle, divided by what's left on the bottom? Just the little b, right? Which is the length. And the last one, sine C on little c, which is the length. Okay. Now what you're looking at right now, this line here, it's a rule with lots of signs in it. So very imaginatively, mathematicians named it the sine rule. Don't forget, um, S-I-N is actually an abbreviation of the full word, which is sine. Okay? This is the sine rule. Now, what's it telling us? Okay? What it tells us is there's this relationship between all of the angles, A, B, and C, the capitals in a triangle, and all of the lengths, little a, little b, and little c, okay? So just like we've been doing in our review questions, you're like, I've got some information, but I'm missing something. I can use trigonometry, or area, or Pythagoras to fill in the gaps. In the same way, the sine rule can be used if you've got, for instance, let's do it this way. Just have a look at this part over here. If, for instance, you know two sides in a triangle and you know one of the angles, if things are in the right position, I'm going to show you some examples in a second, if you know two sides in an angle, you can use that to find another angle. You can find the rest of it. Or if you've got two angles and one of the sides, you can use that to find another side. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what the arrangements look like. So underneath where you've written that, um, I'd like you to write a subheading which is examples.